assembled here in the sanctuary. You have assembled in your homes to rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is truly in his holy tongue. Let all the earth keep silent before you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today we are rejoicing. Thank you for this privilege that you've allowed us to come, to gather here, to gather remotely, to celebrate your love, representing the finished work of Jesus on Calvary. We ask now you are anointing on this service, and you'll find it be there in your sight. We ask your blessing on the region of our Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. 
and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with the armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his arm, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them on him. And he took his staff in his hand, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on, and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, yeah. and rooting, and rooting, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with stabs? And the Philistine cursed thee by his God. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of the host, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will be this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the, the carcass of the host of, of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And in all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, and that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, took thence a stone, and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine with a slew and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it up, drew it out of the sheep thereof, and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistine saw this champion was dead, they fled. God's word is truly blessed. Thank you so much, Sister Luma. We have an announcement that you can see. Good morning, everyone. We are truly blessed to see another day, and we are just praising the Lord for all of His goodness. Amen. I have several cards to read, so I ask you for your patience. Thank you for your gift. Dear Pastor Fowler and the Mount Olivet family, thank you for the gift you gave and for your good wishes too. They are appreciated so much more because they came from you. Thank you, love, Jean Bosley. Your kind expression of sympathy and friendship will always remain in our memories. Thank you for your thoughtfulness. The Jenkins, Darrell Justice, Goodwin, Hughes, Wilson families, thank you so much for the flowers and prayers. Dear Pastor Fowler and our MOBC Deaconess, 
Deaconess Harry Johnson, you know you really got me when you said as a favor to me, please come and take the pictures for me Sunday. I said, I don't do the public yet. New Jersey's numbers are still high. Jaden told me, Deacon Northley told him not to say anything to me, but Sister Sandra Harmon was the mother of the year. How could I say no? I love y'all at MOBC, and yes, it takes a village, and all of you have helped in some way with Jaden. For that, I truly thank y'all. Now, all I can say is thank you so much for recognizing me and honoring me with Mother of the Year 2021. I was so misty all day. You will never know how you touched my heart. Many of my family members called and were also misty, saying it couldn't have happened to a better mother. Of course, my oldest son jokingly said, it only took 53 years. <laughs> Congratulations, Mama. Mr. Ron Perry, the Minister of Music, started playing my mother's favorite song. For that, Brother Ron, I, love, I will love you forever. Yes, I became even more tearful. This was a wonderful, blessed day for me. To express, to express gratitude for this honor is not enough. I will have to find another way to send my love. I will remember Sunday, May 9, 2021, forever. Again, thank you, Sister Hazeline Thompson. Amen. And you do not have to thank us anymore. You're well deserving. Grateful and blessed. Thanking God for you, Ephesians 1.16. To the deaconess of Mount Olivet Baptist Church. Uh, to, yes, and Mount Olivet Baptist Church. Thank you so much. We send you our sincere appreciation for all of your expressions of condolence and love. Love and God's blessings, Deacon Gretchen Bryant and the family of Deacon Stephen Bryant. Saying thank you doesn't seem like enough to show how much your caring and thoughtfulness have meant. But though the words are simple, hope you know how much warmth and appreciation come with them. The family of Rosie Mae Foster Fowler. Amen. Amen. With special thanks to all of you. To know you is to know people who are kind, considerate, and thoughtful. To know you is to be grateful for the special things you do. For everything you've done, for being the special people that you are. Thank you so very much. Love, Lucy Spade. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the givers. To the Mount Olivet Church family, unexpected blessings are like a huge hug from God. Your thoughtfulness is very much appreciated. Thank you for the beautiful dish plant, Josephine Hutton. That is Nelda's mother. And grateful are the receivers. Thank you very much, Miss Josephine Hutton and family. Amen. It takes a special kind of person to care enough, to take the time for others, to do whatever it takes to help somebody out. This is from our, our brother Robert Goldsboro. Yes, and he says, thanks to all for your remembrance and kindness on my April 27th birthday. Amen. All is well. Exception periodic rheumatoid osteoarthritis. Other than that, he is well. And he wishes us well, and he thanks us for everything you have done, for everything you have given. Thank you. Robert Goldsberg. Mm -hmm. 
With much appreciation, some people have a special gift for making others happy. Thank you for the beautiful bouquets of flowers I received at the pink service and on Mother's Day to the deaconess of MOBC and MOBC church family. Kindness like yours means more than you know and more than a thank you could possibly show. God bless. Thanks again, love, Sister Jean Bosley. Amen, I believe that it's a reading of the cards. Hopefully I have not missed any. Our additional announcements, we ask that you can continue to participate in our weekly Sunday school, prayer calls for both the men and the women, and our Monday night Zoom Bible study, amen? Our next youth Zoom Bible session will be this coming Thursday, May 27th at 6.30. If you would like to participate in that and you're not already on the list, please send your name to me at your earliest convenience. Sunday School. You may now pick up Sunday School books for the summer quarter. They are located in the classroom next to the church office. Please only take the book with your name on it, and that is from Deaconess Janet Powell. We are reminded that our 31st Annual Men and Women's Day is Sunday, June 13th. And again, Sister Glenda Lawson and Brother Carl Gibson are our 2021 Men and Women's Day chairpersons. Mm -hmm. Our theme this year, Rejoicing in Hope, our scripture is Romans 12:12. 12, 12. Our colors this year are navy blue and white. And we again ask you that um, you are reminded of our giving for this year. Bronze, 250, silver, 350, and gold, 500, and anything in between that is on your heart to give. Donations are to be dropped off at the church as you would your tithes and offerings during designated times or mail donations to trustee Pearl Miles. Remember to mark your envelope, Men and Women's Day. Scholarship and Youth Recognition Sunday is June 27th. Dear parents of Mon Olivet Youth, you are invited to submit your child and children's academic achievements for the school year 2021, as well as notices of graduation from preschool elementary school, middle school, high school, and college to be included in the Scholarship and Youth Recognition Journal, which will be sent via email on the 27th of June. A photo of your child and children can also be included. And again, you guys know what a huge undertaking this is for me, so please get your information in as soon as possible. And the main event on June 27th will be the celebration of our 2021 high school graduates, our two sophisticated ladies, Sister Danae Moody and Sister Kate Tossage. Amen. We are looking forward to celebrating with them. Again, you are reminded of the upcoming election. Please keep in mind of the dates in which you have to, uh, for your mail in Dallas, which is June 1st, and so on. All of these things are in your bulletin. We wish a happy birthday to all those who are, who are having a birthday this week, and we ask that you continue to pray for our sick and shut in. That ends your announcements for today. Amen. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Deacon Ms. Hayes. And yes, we are so appreciative of all the thank you cards from the Mother's Day recognition and Sister Thompson. It just goes to remind us people will forget what you say, they'll forget what you do, but they will always remember how you treated them. So we are so thankful that they are appreciative of that. And our Men and Women's Day 31st anniversary is coming up on the second Sunday of June, and we are so thankful to have our quarter leaders, Sister Linda Lawson and Brother Carl Gibson. Please help us this year. We are looking to, again, renovate the sanctuary cellar and your support here is going to help us just take advantage of this blessing God has created for us to ensure that we can update many items here. We look forward to your success. I want to thank so many and it's done on me over the weekend. 
We have truly been blessed throughout this pandemic challenge. We have not missed a beat. On so many fronts, truly we thank God for our Sunday school. They have done outstanding. Wilma, Moore, and Deaconess Powell, and Deaconess Johnson, Deaconess Powell, was our instructor today. We thank everybody who attends. We want to thank our uh, prayer calls every week, the clarion prayer, Deaconess Johnson, and the men of viral prayer with our deacons, our deaconess, our deacons. Our food ministry hasn't skipped a beat on Thursday. They've been out there doing this. Even though this has been a pandemic challenge, need of food has been there. Well, I want to thank them for doing our outstanding job, even our fourth Sunday. Food uh, distribution with Sister Owens that has been going on yes. successfully. And we want to thank all of our youth for participating in their scripture shower. Mm -hmm. They have not missed a beat. In fact, they have excelled in an amazing way because they're going on the hand fresh back. And I truly want to thank everyone who comes out who's a part of our live stream committee or live stream team. You guys have done outstanding, and we thank you for that. There is always more you can do in this experience called life. There's always improvement on many fronts, but we must learn. Thank God for what you have and the blessing that He has given you. Because when you tell Him thank you for what He has, it seems like He's more willing to give you more. And no matter about it, so we thank God for everything. Today we are truly excited. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for how He has worked out to us. I don't know if you're trying to do Stevie or Ray or whatever, but keep them shades on until the doctor tells you to take them off. Now, what did this struggle? Don't rub your eyes. Did he tell you to rub your eyes? Did he say, don't rub your eyes? We'll make sure that you keep things in perspective. So many people were concerned about you. We're yes. so happy that you're here today. Thank God for the blessing, Dr. Perry. Thank you. And we are so happy to hear you. We'll be blessed and with so uh, let me just take a moment and thank everybody who sent um, text messages and called me. And uh, I don't want to call any names because I'm going to miss somebody. But um, you know who you are. And uh, I was talking to the lady from, I have a friend in Trenton. And she called me and she said, I saw the last stream of your service when Reverend had prayed for you. She said, tell me something. Your whole family was there? Because when you called family, she said, I noticed... I said, that's the way we are. We are a family, and you call on a family member, they all show up. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I think that God, that's a blessing, y'all. That's a blessing. A lot of people go to church, they, they, they even call friends, I go to church with friends. But I thank God that I go to church with my church family. Reverend, thank you to you. He didn't miss a beat. He called me almost every day. And I want to thank you for that, for encouraging me. Um, and you know what, y'all? If he did it for me, he can do it for you. And it doesn't matter what the problem is, I know a God who can fix it. And I hope you do too. Yeah. Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, today we are rejoicing and we thank you for this great gospel. This great gospel, Lord, that you have blessed us to enjoy. We thank you for our Savior Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, we come now as a family of believers, as a branch, a part of Zion's kingdom, to tell you thanks. We thank you for your finished work on Calvary. And we thank you that our Savior sits at your right hand side making intercession for us. Today, Lord, we continue to thank you for 117 years of your faithfulness. We ask that you continue to order our steps in according to your word. Lord, we pray for our elected officials all around the world that they will be reminded you have appointed them to do the work of the Lord. Father, we pray for our armed force personnel and their families all around the world. We ask, Lord, that you keep them safe. We ask, Lord, that you bless them to do a work of good for your kingdom. Today, Lord, we want to thank you for an apparent ceasefire between the Palestinians and the Israelites. We thank you, Lord, for this ceasefire. We would ask that you bless the whole. Yes, and the whole and whole, you know, that innocent people won't lose their lives. Today, Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless those who stand in the name and for the purpose of social justice, Lord. Right now, Lord, we ask that this quiet that we are experiencing not allow our nation to forget the injustice, the inequities and policing, and that, Lord, we will bring this nation to a point that truly represents your design for humanity. And today, Lord, we continue to pray for so many. We pray for Rita Ellis, and we thank you, Lord, for how you're blessing Jacqueline Raven, Jane Bosley, and Lucy Spade, we pray for Brother Deal. Thank you, Lord, that you bless Dr. Goldsboro to celebrate a little friendship. Today, Lord, we want to pray for Hank and Evelyn Parsons. Yes, yes. We pray, Lord, that they make contact with them, Lord, that we can confirm that they're still being blessed by you. Today, Lord, we lift them to you. We ask now, Lord, your blessing on Sister Big Time, Teresa Phillips, Lord. Mm -hmm. Strengthen her during this time of medical child. Today, Lord, we pray for Sister Lois Gray, as well as her husband, Elijah Gray. We thank you, Lord, that they're still standing, and we ask that you equip them to continue going forward. Lord, today we pray for our own Sister Carrie Johnson, who has lost several friends, close friends. We ask that you strengthen her as she continues to not only support the families of her friends, but also continue to do a good work here at this branch of Zion. Today, Lord, we want to thank you that you have blessed our own Shana Wilson to travel, but to make it back here safely today. Thank you, Lord. Continue to sing praises from your, of your, of your great, great blessings. Lord, we thank you for blessing from Perry. We do, Lord. We thank you that his testimony is there to let everybody know when you lay it out and trust in God. Great things will happen. So today, Lord, we are just thankful that we can look out and see so many people that you have blessed. We're thankful, Lord, that there are vaccines available for people to take. And we want to thank you for how you bless the doctors to be instruments that you guide their hands, their eyes, their mouth. We want to thank you, Lord, and bless us to realize that there will always be difficult and challenging days. But just as we notice how deep the valley is, just as we notice how high the mountain may be, let us always notice and rejoice that we serve a mighty good God. He's there to answer prayer, and we thank you for doing that. You're there, Lord, to bring us through tough challenges, and we thank you for doing that. You're there, Lord, when nobody else wants to be around. And we thank you for being there. We thank you for being everywhere. We thank you for being all knowing. We thank you for having all this power. But we thank you that we are realizing what Grandma and Granddad realized. We thank you that we are realizing what the great theologians like Martin Luther King realized. We thank you that we can now realize what Paul and Matthew. Serve a mighty good God. And because you love us, you 
Reverend, I promised our young people that I'd sing a song that they could sing along with us at home. And this is the song they wanted us to sing. Come on, church, you know this.
pray along with me and walk yes. with me. Yes. And yes. God reveals what he wants to be with me. Uh -huh. Amen. And, and know this. There is indeed a blessing mm -hmm. for us when we gather together yeah. yes. as a family to praise his name. Uh -huh. you, 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 you know, when, I, when, when Brother Ron talks about this, it's, 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 it's airman, if you will. Uh -huh. It makes me think of mine. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. See, one of the first things they told me I, I went with when my eyes started acting up was that I was legally blind. Oh, oh. And that's the story uh, that Brother Ron had. They told him he was legally blind. Yeah. Right. My, my, but God still worked miracles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still worked miracles. Yes. Yeah. 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 It doesn't, does it doesn't yeah. matter yeah. what it is. God yeah. still worked miracles. Yeah. 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 He might yeah. he, he, he yeah. not reach yeah. down yeah. and touch you. Come on, come on, brother. He might just send somebody to pray yes, for you. Yes, all right, yes. all right. But he blesses the doctor with knowledge so that they can figure out that when the diagnosis says you are legally blind, mm -hmm. they can do something about it, just like in the Bible. When, God, when Jesus walked, he used different methods, but he gave the sight back. Yes, I thank God thank this morning. You, God. Thank you. You know, I, I thank God this morning for the opportunity of standing in front of you once again. And just for a minute, if you could just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this opportunity. God, I thank you for the people who are present here. Those are watching mm -hmm. online, Lord. And yes, God, yes. God, we just ask that you would impart to each and every one of us a message, that, especially the message of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. He gave it all up. Oh, yes. Gave up his glory yes. to become one like us in order to save us. I bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart. Uh -huh. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I know this morning we read in uh, within our hearing, we read from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 33 to 51. Uh -huh. I just want to add this one on this piece of scripture, just two verses, from Psalm 46, verses 10 and 11. And it reads, Be still. Be still. Be still. And know no. that no. I am God. Yes. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still. And know that I am God. Just for a few minutes, if you will allow me, I want to talk on the topic. Be still and know. Uh -huh. The question is, is Satan keeping you busy? B-U-S-Y. Uh -huh. Is Satan uh -huh. keeping you busy? Uh -huh. You know the tricks there. Satan, he's able to do some stuff sometimes to take us off of a game. Yes, that's true. Years ago I had a Pastor friend of mine, we were having a conversation. He gave me, uh, he gave me this uh, information. I'm gonna pass on to you. All right. And he says Satan called a worldwide convention of demons. <laughs> and his opening address, he said, "We can't keep Christians from going to church. We can't keep them from reading their Bibles and knowing the truth. We can't even keep them from." forming an intimate relationship with their Savior. Once they gain that connection with Jesus, our power over them is broken. So let them go to their churches. Let them have their covered dish dinners. But steal their time so that they don't have time to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is what I want you to do, said the devil. Distract them from gaining hold 
of their Savior and maintaining that vital, vital connection throughout their day. How shall we do this? His demon shouted. Keep them busy. Oh, and in non essentials of life, oh, and invent innumerable schemes to occupy their minds. Busy. He answered. Tempt them to spend, 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 and borrow, borrow, borrow. Persuade the wives to go to work for long hours and the husband to work six to seven days each week, 10 to 12 hours a day, so they can afford their empty lifestyles. <laughs> Keep them from spending time with their children. As their families fragment, soon their homes will offer no escape from the pressures of work. Overstimulate their minds so that they cannot hear that still small voice. Entice them to play the radio or online music devices whenever they drive. To keep the TV, computers, online, games, and their connection to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh -oh. and TikTok. Going constantly in their home to see that it is in every store and restaurant in the world plays nothing but non-biblical music constantly. This will jam their minds and break that union with Christ. So fill the coffee table with magazines and newspapers. Pound their minds with the news 24 hours a day. Invade their driving moments with billboards. Flood their mailboxes with junk mail. Mail order catalog, sweet states, and every kind of newsletter and promotional offering, free product services, and falls home. Keep skinny, beautiful models on the magazine oh, and TV okay. so their husbands will believe that our own beauty is what is important. Oh, and they become dissatisfied with their wives. Yeah. Wow. Keep the wives too tired to love their husbands at night. Give them headaches too. If they don't give their husbands the love they need, they will begin to look elsewhere. That will fragment their families quickly. Give them Santa Claus to distract them from teaching their children the real meaning of Christmas. Yes. Give them a Easter money so they won't talk about his resurrection and power uh -oh. over sin and death. Uh -huh. Even in their recreation, let them be excessive. Have them return from their recreation exhausted. Keep them too busy to go out in nature and reflect in God's creation. Send them to amusement parks. Sporting events, plays, concerts, yes, and movies instead of, instead, keep them busy, busy, busy. And when they meet for spiritual fellowship, let them leave with troubled conscience. Crowd their lives with so many good causes they have no time to seek power from Jesus. Soon they will be working in their own strength. Sacrificing your health and family for the good of the cause. It will work. It will work. It was quite a simple plan. The demons went eagerly to their assignment, causing Christians everywhere to have a little time for, the, for their God and for their families. Right. Having no time to tell others about the power of Jesus to change life. I guess the question is, has the devil been successful? At his key, you be the judge. He keeps us busy. Uh -huh. Busy as an acronym means being under Satan's yoke. Oh, oh, wow. You know, when I first came to Jamaica in 1980, winter of 1980, I, 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 I lived in Delaware. And my sister came down from New York and she says, we're going to bring you up to New York. You know, take the train so you can figure out how to ride the train by yourself. And, you know, okay. We went up there. One of the first things I noticed when we got into New York City was that everybody was busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, y'all got to understand this. I come from, you know, people go to Jamaica because they want to relax. They hear about Irie Mon, you know. No problem. Uh -huh. That kind of stuff. Place to relax. Well, things kind of move at a different speed in Jamaica than it does in New York City. Uh -huh. 
So I'm, 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 I'm walking around my sister. Finally, the sister said, where are all these people going? Y'all seem to be in such a hurry. She said, well, that's just how we do it up here. We, uh, we don't have time to just enjoy and look around. Oh, you know, we go, and that's the thing. That, that's a, one of the first lessons I learned when I came to the United States. We live today in a complex and trouble-filled world. Where we often find ourselves faced with certain problems far beyond our control. Past the mention in the about what was going on between Israel and the Palestinians. That's just one of the things. In Ethiopia, there's genocide going on down there. And there's a whole lot of other things outside of our control that's going on. These gathering storms can suddenly break upon our lives and make it impossible for us to escape. What do you do when you lose your job? And I'll be encouraged now. When you lose your job in the middle of a pandemic, and your bills come due. Yeah. What do you do when there is no light in the house? Yeah. There's an eviction notice in the mailbox. Yeah. The bill collectors won't stop calling. They call in you at all times of the night. They know that there's a lot of say they can't call you past a certain time, but they violated yeah. What do you do when there's not enough food to feed the family? How do you proceed when the bottom seems to have fallen out of your life? How do you proceed when the bottom seems to have fallen out of your life? Where do you turn when your marriage is torn apart by divorce? How do you handle extreme health conditions that does not seem to have a way out? When your children are acting right, when drugs and alcohol have found a way into your into your you and your family's life, these are just a few of the things that beset us. They are beyond, beyond our ability to resolve, and consequently brings us to our knees. God then steps in, because that's the kind of God we serve. He steps in. And he rescues us from our hour of crisis. Surely you can relate to time like this. After such a deliverance, how are we to respond? According to the verses we read in Psalm 46, we must pause and reflect upon what he has done. We must look back and marvel at his salvation. In a new and more profound way, we must consider who God is and how this truth spreading can affect the world. This is exactly how God counseled his ancient people after he defeated their enemies and spared their lives. He called to them saying, see striving, be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. In verse 10 that we read this morning from, from, from Psalm 46, this, this, this verse, God himself is the speaker. As you read Psalm 46, in the, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's like a, there's a third party in the opening uh, uh, verses. But when you get to verse 10, God himself takes over and he is speaking. He says, be still. Seize. You need to seize what you're doing. And know that I am God. See, people forget who God is now. A matter of fact, they put him as a less than. Some evil in the church, some of us sometimes forget to call on him first. You know, ain't nothing wrong with calling the pastor and asking him to pray for you. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine that you ought to pray for yourself before you call the pastor. Mm -hmm. I, I would imagine you would gather your family up and say, let us pray. Let us pray. And then you go to the church as a whole and say, 
Can you pray for me? You might want to tell the pastor what's going on. And the pastor, I'm sure, is glad to go intervene for you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Yeah. God says he personally summons them, his people, and he tells them who he is. And how his mighty acts will be made known to the world. The story of David and Goliath, as we looked at it this morning, in 1 Samuel 17, Goliath in any generation is or would be a formidable man, measuring at least at over 90 tall. Some records indicate that he, he fell somewhere between 9 feet 9 inches and 11 feet tall. To the Philistines, he was a man among men. He was their champion. Goliath was a seasoned warrior. Uh -huh. It is said that he was descended from the ancient race of Anakim, a remnant of which found refuge in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod, when Joshua cut them off from the mountains and Judah. In battle gear, Goliath was commanded. He wore a coat of mail, his armor that weighed in at 5,000 shepherds, 167 pounds. Mm. He wore a bronze helmet on his head. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves and bronze javelin was slain on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod, and his iron point weighed 600 shekels, 18 and three quarter pounds. He was so massive that he had a personal armor bearer that went ahead of him to provide protection. So when Israelite, the Israelites met Goliath that day, there was this boastful man. He liked to boast. He says, Am I not, he says, Am I not a Philistine? He boasted that he had killed Hophni and Phineas and carried the ark of God to the house of Dagon. Now, in case you don't know who Hophni and Phineas is, Hophni and Phineas were the sons of Eli, yeah. who they were supposed to be priests, but they used the temple for stuff that was utterly out of the proper practice of God. Mm -hmm. So he said, here, I'm the one who killed it. And I took the ark oh. and brought it to the house mm -hmm. of David. Well. Now, I want you to, 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 to meet, you to meet David right now. He's still a young man. He's somewhere around 17, probably by 18. Notice first his person. His, his pleasing and attractive presence or address. He had an admirable physique and his head screwed on the right way. And was of immense strength and agility. The prominent feature about him was his manliness. There was nothing little about David. His favorite pastime was music. He was very patriotic. He was wise. His piety says, and the Lord was with him. This was his noblest recommendation. He carried God with him into all the minutest details of his life. He was a man after God's own heart. If, if there's an example that you want to follow, I said, look at his resume. It might make you think differently about the way that you carry yourself. The arena was set. See, the battle is set to run. Saul and his men are gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah. The Philistines stood on a mountain on the other side, and Israel stood on another mountain on the other side. There's a valley between them. This was a religious war. David was on God's side. Yeah. Goliath, who didn't know it yet, but he was the dead man walking, oh, fought for David and cursed David by his gods. Saul so tried to, to dress David up in his gear. I got to stop right there for yeah. a little bit and talk. When you do God's work, yeah. uh -huh. don't let other people try to tell you what to do. Uh, I, I want you to know that when you're working on God, but when God has commissioned you and sent you out to do something, don't let somebody who has supposed to have a different assignment come along and tell you, oh, that's not the way you ought to do it. God will give you an assignment and then tell somebody 
has to come along and tell you, no, don't tell me not to do that. That's not how he works. See, God don't want you to do that way. He will make it clear exactly what you are supposed to do. See, Saul tried to dress David up in his own arm. Like one size fit all. One size doesn't fit all. That, that, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Said, one size does not fit all. But we have to understand that we are clothed in the righteousness of God. And though we might look similar, we are clothed in the righteousness of God and each and every one a different individual. We got our own story to tell. We got our own story to tell. There are some of us who can tell you that, listen, I was caught up in drugs and God rescued me. And now I can't keep my mouth shut. I got to tell somebody about his goodness, about his grace. Some of us, we were big drinkers. Enough 
about God. And that is something that as Christians, as the church, we need to make sure we know more about God than we know about Satan. We give too much prop to Satan. He can't do some of the things that we think that he did. Some of them are just us. And we just, just us. And we need to be able to acknowledge to God that yes, God, I sin. I ain't going to pass the blade to say That was God. That was all me. It was all me. <laughs> David fought not in his own strength, but in God's God's spirit gave him his only courage, yes. suggesting his weapons, and guided the stone from his sling to Goliath's temple. Thank you, Lord. The war between God's people and the enemies of God is still being raged today. Right. I want you to know, on, I want to know on whose side are you? As they say in Jamaica, who you for? Who you for? Who are you for? Who you for? If you are on God's side, you shall win in the end. Because God shall win in all his those folks who were his who were called by his name, yeah. called by his purpose. The one that he tells you that he, his grace is sufficient yeah. and his strength is made perfect yeah. in weakness. Yeah. God says you too shall win. All right now. Mm -hmm. See, the world believes that might is right, mm -hmm. yeah. but we believe that right is might. Mm -hmm. right. When you speak out against the life, those who profess to know you will point out your shortcomings. One of the biggest things that, that, that people like to point out when they see someone who has been taken over by God, and is being led by God, being directed by God, they are this line, they are this, I know him when he was. Yeah, I know him when he was. Yeah, you did, but you don't know me now. You don't know me now. See, they look at you and they see weakness. Uh -huh. See, when, back in the day when, when you didn't know anything, uh -huh. when you weren't able to stand up, when you weren't able to tell people about Jesus, when, you, when the words that came out of your mouth were filthy, uh -huh. they know that, they remember that. But they don't see the change. Uh -huh. They don't see the change. They try to discourage you. They try to tell you that you're weak. You're too young. Now you don't have enough experience. You can't do it. You don't have enough education or training. This is too great a task. The naysayers know more about your life than they know about God. Fighting Goliath requires that you know Jesus for yourself. You can't be depending on your mama's knowledge of Jesus in order to fight for that. You better know Jesus for yourself. Fighting the land requires that you choose your weapons wisely. And you only can do that if you let God choose the weapon for you. Goliath hits directly proportional to the level and the strength of your faith. You see, if you down here in faith, chances are he gonna walk past you. But when you up here, then you become the one that he's after. When God has lifted you up, when God has blessed you, when things are going right, and it seems like everything you touch become gold, that's the person that 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 Goliath goes after. He does that because he wants to knock you down and discourage those who might have been listening to you. Mm -hmm. He wants to knock you off that pedestal that we sometimes put people on. Mm -hmm. And then we don't, we don't need to do that. Right. He hits directly proportional to the level and strength of your faith. See, Goliath is devious. Yeah. He tries to get a foothold in your house. So that he can hit you from within. Right. He sent somebody that you you try to help out. 
they need a few nights someplace to stay. You find out that same person you were trying to help them, they have gone out there and said all kinds of stuff about you. Matter of fact, when they stayed at your house for two days, they stole you, they stole your stuff blind. His greatest weapon is intimidation. Yeah. If he intimidates you, he believes you will not hear the voice of God. B-U-S-Y, busy. He's a master of disguise. He's like a chameleon. He changes shape, size, and scope. He hides his true form. He did that to the kindergarten of Eden. Yeah. He told, he, he shall not surely die. And in one word, he said, we need to understand this thing, that, 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 that the devil knows the scriptures. The Bible tells us that they believe and they tremble. They, they, they made a little change. They put not, ye shall not surely die. And look at where we are because of that. Not. Another thing about Goliath, he's generational. He's generational. It's something he started with you as a mom. And, and mom and dad, he started with you and he rolled down to your children and to your children and he keeps going. And sometimes, years later, folks are all can't figure out, why are we doing this? Oh, mom, you don't do this. But we, 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 we get to the place where the stuff that they were doing was wrong. But we keep on doing it anyway. And I tell you, Satan is glad. He's glad. He says, okay, it's generational. Goliath practices the art of isolation. See, by yourself, he can beat you up. And that's why the Bible tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves. Iron sharpens an iron. And you need to get in with, a, with some believers who knows about God. Oh, who, 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 someone who writes a resume of all the things that God has done for them. They, 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 you, you know, you're going to do something that you think you need doing it alone. And I would do that too. Well, how did you overcome it? <laughs> to the praise of God. I overcome it. We got to learn that the praises of God has deliverance in it. Yes, it does. Goliath also comes with the spirit of discouragement. Remember who your redeemer is. Yes. See, they try to kill Jesus. Oh, let me backtrack a little bit. Right. They didn't try. They killed Jesus. Okay. And they were so sure they buried him. And then they, they were so sure we we're going to make sure nobody steal that body. They put a big old stone in front of it and they had a legion of soldiers all guarding that. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to make sure he stayed, stayed there. Mm. Well, you know, we might not have died physically, but we were dead in our sins. Yeah. And the death of Christ on the cross released us, woke us up. Yeah. And we see with different eyes now. Mm -hmm. We can catch things that other people miss completely. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, I, I, sometimes, you know, me and my wife, we watch different, different TV stations, different things. Mm -hmm. And so she'll be watching something from probably Netflix mm -hmm. or BET or one of those things. That, mm -hmm. And I'll ask her a question: Why are they? Why are they doing it? Because I'll tell you the truth. They always, portray, they always portray church people in these movies. There's they, so many sinners in the church. They're scheming and doing something. They always do that. So why do they keep doing that? Why don't they make a, they, a really righteous man or woman? Why don't they tell that story instead of talking about this one scheming or oh, oh, this one, the pastor? The pastor's, uh, the pastor's son, is, he, he's having an affair. With, with the with the with the with the, with the, with the secretary uh -huh. and, and, and he's married. I'm like, why do they have to do that? Why don't they tell the goodness? Yeah. But no, I guess he makes good for good tea. Yeah. Yeah. 
when you when you're dealing with Goliath, you need good reference material. We know we got the Bible, amen? Yeah. We know we got the yeah. basic instructions before the end. Yeah. And some of us don't even take the time. Take the time. Come on. Not that you know, in the morning when you open your eye and you realize that I'm alive. I'm alive. Don't even know how to say thank you, God. Thank you. Don't even know how to sing how to say, I will bless the Lord, all oh, my oh. soul. No, you see, the first thing we do yeah. when we get up is we want a cup of coffee because I need to wake up. And God already yeah. woke you up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, see, David fought the lion and the bear. Mm. That was his resume when he walked out there. But I want to tell you something else about the life. Regardless of what form he comes in, it's only for a season. Amen. Thank God. Thank See, Hallelujah. when the Israelites, and, and he came up for about 40 days, Goliath was up there yelling and screaming, send your champion for about 40 days. But he, he didn't understand that, listen, we God was sending somebody to come over there and knock you off of your pedestal. And you just got 40 days grace. Because yeah. God could have sent David from day one and finished him. But God says, I'm going to give you a little bit more time so that you can go up there and say all the foolishness that you wanted. But when God steps out on the sea, the time's up. When you're having mountaintop experiences, you see, Goliath is still there, biding his time and posture. He is waiting for you to get down to the valley. He wants you to get down to the valley floor. You see that he believes down there he will have an advantage. But he doesn't understand that all I am is an instrument in the hand of God. After this trial, God calls upon all of his people. Now more than ever, now more than ever, that we all be, that he will be exalted over all the nations of the earth. We need to see striving. See striving. The word striving is not in the original text. God simply says, see. This verb literally means to sink. It pictures the idea of a person sinking down into a chair in order to relax. In this reclining posture, an individual would settle down and rest. He would relax, relax, enjoy peace and calm. When God tells you that, he says that, be still and know that I am God. We need to practice that, be still. Because see, there's a lot of noise going on around there's a lot of noise out there trying to distract us. There's a lot of noise that can't keep you off your game. There's a lot of noise that people sound like they know what they're talking about. They sound like they're walking with God. But let me tell you, there's a lot of counterfeit religion out there. There's a lot of counterfeit folks out there who want you to, to catch you and lead you astray. We got to know God is for ourselves. We got to know for ourselves that God continues to be seated on his lofty throne of sovereignty, raised up over every circumstance. Upon his head are many diadems. Yes. In his right hand he holds his scepter by which he rules the nation. He is lifted up high above the trials and tribulations that threatens us. From his exalted position, God is causing all things to work together for good for those of us who are called according to his purpose. So in the midst, let's take this morning and give God great praise. Yeah. 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 from this assurance yeah. yeah. that the Lord reigns. So, in the midst of all of your worries, 
in the midst of all of your enemies, and how they try to keep you busy, how Satan does, and send his imps out to try to keep you busy so that you don't get to follow God the way you ought to. I want to tell you that in this, this, this morning, this afternoon, wherever we're at, that God reigns. Remember, yes, he does. God has already chosen his own champion. Yes, he, did. he said, who shall I send and who will go for us? And you see, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. She said, God, Satan thought that he had won. He had won when the legions of angels didn't swoop down and take Jesus off the cross. He, thought, he figured he had won when they beat him, when they spat on him, when they pierced him in the side. But God still reigns. He thought the victory had been secure when Jesus uttered, it is finished. God still reigns. He thought it was all said and done when Jesus uttered the word, Father, into thy hands I command my spirit. But we know what happened. But one thing I want to tell you something today, that early Sunday morning, that early Sunday morning, I'm a champion who rose up and despite the stone that was in front of the tomb, despite the legions that was in front of him, he walked out of them great clothes. See, great clothes for great people. Great clothes ain't for people who live. So Jesus stepped out of the grave, the grave clothes and left it back there. Just in the form of what was in there. But he walked out a different day. Every Sunday morning. Oh, I'm so early. That's all we got when we get up early in the morning. The first thing we ought to do is get back there. Get back. The laws are moving here. Thank you. 
made to heaven. Amen. 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 Don't set up a tent. Just have all you can. Right. You know, thank, you. thank you so much, Reverend Wilbur, for having us. Yeah. 